turns out, okay, so for this reaction, there's a low pressure limit as well as a high pressure limit. So first let's talk about the low pressure limit, okay? In the low pressure limit, there is not very much of this M, this second body, if you will, okay? And so what that means is likely this K2 reaction dominates under low pressure. And the reason for that is not due to the rate constant, but really what's going on is that K2, the value of the rate constant, is much, much greater than the value of K minus 1 times A star times M. Okay? So in other words, at the low pressure limit, the value of M is very small. Okay? So small that it makes K2 much faster. Okay? Overall, much faster. And so now what that does is if we go back, let me rewrite this, um, my dp by dt, okay? So we gather dp by dt regardless of the pressure is the following. It's total differential, you know, using the steady state approximation, right? Okay, so we got that for the rate of dp by dt formation. Okay, so now if K2 is much larger than K minus 1 times A star times M, okay, then what that means here is um, in this denominator, this K minus 1 times M is very small, right? It's not even times A star anymore, so it's very small compared to K2, okay? And so what we can say then is... Uh, K minus 1 times M plus K2 just approximately equals K2. And look what that's going to do to the product formation. So now in the rate of product formation, if we're ignoring this K minus 1 times M, then we have K1 times K2 times A times M divided by K2. And so this just becomes K1 times A times M, so it looks like a second order reaction, which is fundamentally interesting because if we were to overall um, balance this reaction, right, this just looks like A goes to products, right? The, st the excited states cancel, that second body cancels on either side. So overall, this reaction just looks like a thermal first order decomposition. However, under the low pressure limit, it will go as a second order reaction where the amount of M is important to this reaction, okay? So in other words, now the rate limiting step becomes A plus M. So an A finding some collisional partner M and colliding, that becomes the rate limiting step in this low pressure limit, okay? So what about the high pressure limit? All right, let's talk about the high pressure limit, okay? So in the high pressure limit, it's gonna be the opposite uh, case here, where now there's sufficient amount of second body that the product K minus one times A star times M is much greater than is K2 times A star. I think I forgot to write that over here, you know, if we were actually comparing the proper rates, let's let's actually write that down, K2 times A star, right? We're just comparing the overall rates of the second step to the first step. So in the high pressure limit now, when there's enough of this second body around, K minus one dominates. So the reaction is more likely to go back to reactants than to go to stable products, all right? And so what do we get out of that? Okay, well, what we get out of that is the following. So now 
over here, okay, it becomes the opposite. Um, where now K2, I can basically ignore, all right? And so what I'm going to get out of this thing is dp by dt. Um, so again, k2 is now small compared to the product k1 minus m under the high pressure limit. So we can ignore k2 in this case. And look, m and m is going to cancel. And now I get k1 times k2 divided by k minus 1 all times a. And that is a first order reaction. It's a first order reaction because we only have one reactant raised to the first power. And if we inspect um, K1, K minus two and K2, we remember that K1, so let me box this all up here first, okay? We remember that K1 is second order, K minus one, is second order, but we remembered that K2 is a first order rate constant, so the units will work out, right? The units of our second order K will cancel each other, and K2 is a first order reaction. So in other words, we could really say that the product K1 times K2 divided by K minus one just equals what I'll K say is K RXN, K reaction. And so thus the reaction just looks like the following. A goes to products with rate constant K RXN, which is really the ratio of K1 times K2 divided by K minus one, okay? So these types of mechanisms, right, or in general mechanisms are definitely condition specific, okay? Even when we can apply this steady state approximation, you can see under the high pressure limit, the rate limiting step just becomes A star going on to products, right? Because look, that's what the rate constant becomes, okay? And really it's not even A star goes to products, the reaction just looks like A goes to products, right? DP by DT equals K times A, okay? But now under the low pressure limit, the rate limiting step becomes an A actually colliding with an M because under the low pressure limit, that's what's going to take the most amount of time, an A diffusing around and finding another M for them to collide. Okay, and so now finally what we get out of this thing, okay, is if we keep going here, I just want to show you how we can tease out these limits. Um, so let's see here. So um, doing some algebra and rearranging, okay, uh, let me see, I lost my track. Yes, so if we are talking about now our, um, what we got from the high pressure limit right here, okay, so I'll say dp by dt equals krxn times A, so our apparent first order reaction under high pressure limit, okay? If I'm not gonna make you do this algebra, but I'll just write it for you. If I write one over K reaction, that ends up equaling the following, K minus one over K one times K two plus one over K one times M. So I'm not showing you where um, this algebra comes from, but the important thing to note is, okay, one over K, and really like I'll point to this thing and say that's one over K Rxn, the apparent rate constant in the high pressure limit, okay? So we can see that one over K is proportional to one over concentration, okay? One over M really, but all the same, it's, it's this proportionality. And so what this means now is you can tease out at what point the reaction deviates, right? Because one over K versus one over concentration should give you a straight line for the proper Lindemann Hinshelwood model, okay? However, once you start deviating 
from the model, okay? So once you start deviating from that, you no longer get a straight line and that will tell you at what point your high pressure limit and your low pressure limit starts to kick in, all right? And so if you think about this now, um, because it's one over concentration, the high pressure limit is this way. Um, a big concentration is a small number. Yes, sorry. High pressure limit goes this way and the low pressure limit goes this way. So that gives you right at the boundary where this thing kicks in. 